When we're first learning to fly using the instrument panel, we know that to make a standard rate turn, you need to look at the turn coordinator, and in this example, put a wing on either the left or right hash mark. But what bank angle should we use on the attitude indicator in a standard rate turn? This is a trick question, of course, because it depends on our airspeed. A standard rate turn isn't a particular bank angle, it's a rate of turn that gives us a full 360 degree circle in two minutes. The faster we fly, the steeper the angle we need to get around in that time. Here, we're going to do a parallel entry into this hold in lieu of procedure turn to start an instrument approach. We're coming into the fix at about 120 knots. When initiating a turn, your primary instrument should be your AI, not the turn coordinator, so we do need to have an idea of bank angle. At speeds like this, it's about a 15 degree angle. A good formula is to take the true airspeed, divide it by 10, which gets us 12, then add half to that, so add 6 to 12 to get 18 degrees of bank, which is what we end up seeing on the AI. Now, looking at the breadcrumbs of our aircraft track on foreflight, we get a sense of our turn radius, how wide or narrow our turn is. This is directly related to how fast we're going and what our bank angle is. With no wind effects, a standard rate turn at this airspeed will always have a turn radius that looks like this. Even coming at the hold entry from such an oblique angle, this is plenty of room to maneuver and turn back into intercept. Let's look at an extreme example and come in very slowly close to our stall speed. Don't fly your instrument procedures this way, but let's see what a speed about half as fast will do to the turn radius. Anyone who's done slow flight knows that it doesn't take a big bank angle to make a turn. At 55 knots, we divide by 10 to get 5.5, and a half, add half to that to get about 8 or 9 degrees of bank. Note the very tight turn radius when we do this parallel entry. We're almost right on top of the approach course, making the inbound turn pretty easy too. Totally unnecessary to fly your approaches at this speed. In fact, we could still comfortably execute this parallel entry at the maximum holding speed for this altitude, 200 knots indicated. We know what flying faster will do to our bank angle. Divide the speed by 10 to get 20, and add half to that to get a 30 degree bank angle. That might get a bit extreme for our passengers, so we might back off a bit and do like a 25 degree bank. That turn radius goes very wide this time. Let's compare all three together, moving left to right, slowest to fastest. Each plane completes the turn to the outbound heading in the same amount of time, with the fastest aircraft giving the largest turn radius. What does turn radius have to do with IFR flying? Notice we're on the opposite, non-holding side of the racetrack on each instance. Are we unprotected, especially in the fastest aircraft on the right? No, and it's because the FAA understands turn radius. We won't get too in the weeds on how the FAA determines holding protection. We have a full video on that in our IFR ground school, but the holding area looks like this, drawn to scale. And what you can see is that even at the maximum holding speed, and even with a wider turn due to our slightly less than standard rate turn, our track keeps us well protected. You could see, however, that exceeding the holding speed at 200 knots by too much could stretch that turning radius to where we may no longer be protected, so all this is taken into account. This is just a taste of some of the concepts of instrument flying. If you want to dive in, even if you're an accomplished IFR pilot looking to get stronger, check out our full ground school linked here and in the description today.